Welcome to another exciting episode of the Business of Digital podcast, featuring your hosts, Matt Siltala and Dave Rohr. All right, uh, looking forward to this episode, another awesome uh, opportunity to talk with Simon Hesseltine. I know I said that wrong again, Simon, yep. but uh, you'll love me still. And uh, <laughs> we're here, right? We got Dave uh, in the background somewhere. Hey, Dave. Dave Royer somewhere. Roy, Royer and I'm Matt, not Matt Siltalus like we talked about, you know, no. Matt Siltala. Um, Talk about a reputation nightmare, yeah. right? <laughs> so what we're going to talk about uh, today, we are going to, we're still going to kind of, uh, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about the different uh, uses of social networks, but um, in, you know, some of the stuff that's been in the news lately, um, oh, what is the name of that, uh, the... Dave, what's the name of the uh, the brewery or whatever that's not going to be, or was it a brewery or a coffee shop? The pub. Pub. Yeah. It's a, it's a yeah. It's a pub chain. So, what was their name? Weatherspoons. Weatherspoons. Thank you. I just had a, a moment of a, a brain lapse there. So, like them, for example, getting off all of social media. Tesla saying, you know, deleting their Facebook, and you hear about this kind of stuff happening all the time with brands saying. I'm not going to be on this network anymore. It does, I don't need to be on this, or I don't need social media or anything like that. And so, um, first of all, I'd just love to hear your thoughts and jumping into that, Simon, and then uh, we can go from there. Well, I mean, so the Weatherspoons, what they've come out and said is that they are um, stopping all social accounts from head office, and they're also doing it from their uh, the, the entire chain. And I think their chain is about 900 different uh, pubs th across Britain. Oh, we, wow. So this is not one, it's not a small little business then. Oh, no. I mean, this, the, there's a Weatherspoons basically in every town, at least one. Okay. Yeah. I, I had no idea how, how, first of all, I got two strikes against me. I don't drink. <laughs> and so I don't know anything about pubs or anything like that. And then I had no, yeah, I mean, not in England. So, yeah. Well, I mean, so I've reading some of the posts that have been talking about it. I mean, there's one on the BBC where they said that, um, honestly, none of their accounts had much following. Uh, and they they, gotcha. they weren't getting many tweets anyway, they, any retweets or comments back. So, you know, it, this could just be like a money saving thing as well as a publicity stunt. And there, there are definitely folks out there who do things like this as a publicity stunt. I mean, we've, you know, back in the day, Ryanair, um, you know, they proposed charging for the toilets on the planes. And, you know, that goes out everywhere <laughs> and people talk about it and they don't actually follow through on it. Well, these guys have come out and said that, you know, they are turning off all these social accounts. And if you want to get information about what's going on, you can read their magazine. I'm sure everybody subscribes to the Weatherspoons magazine. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Yes. I, I, I have one yeah, right here. Yeah. Uh, so it, you know, it, it's, it's interesting what they're doing. I mean, for the, for the Tesla and uh, SpaceX, um, I, I believe somebody tweeted at Elon Musk and said, why do you still have Facebook accounts? And he said, we do. And then that afternoon they were down. And, you know, th th there's a lot of issues going on with Facebook at the moment, as we all know, um, Cambridge Analytica and, and, and so forth. Um, but I mean, we've, we've known these issues were out there for years. I mean, anybody who sat in a Marty Weintraub presentation and seen how he passes data. Yeah. That's what I was yeah, thinking. I mean, exactly. He, he, he can, slice and dice that data any way you want um and you know that's what's been happening with it and especially when they've been able to pull more data out and you know people have been giving this data away by answering these you know what disney princess quiz are you um you know, it, it's it's yeah. silly stuff but it, it, it's out there and that's that's what's uh, happening these days but yeah so i mean you, you do get these you get the ones like this and then you have the um i'm trying to remember the name of the cafe in dublin um, he always responds to things in an absolutely over-the-top negative manner um, where he's, you know, riling against people, but that gets him publicity as well. I think the last the, the last one he did, he did one against vegans yeah, right. uh, and he banned vegans from his, from his restaurant. And then I believe he also banned breastfeeding mothers unless they were willing <laughs> to pay a bottling charge. And... <laughs> And, you know, again, so it, it's all trying to get publicity for him. Um, and it works for him because people talk about it. And, yeah. You know, <clears throat> the vegan one, okay, he upsets vegans. But then a lot of people come to his 
um, his aid and uh, to, to support him who are not vegans because they like eating meat and they like you know talking about that and you know so it, it worked out pretty well well it reminds me of it reminds me of that one shop I can't remember where they were but uh, it was a sandwich shop and you know the sign that everybody shared forever in every conference about the hey we're the, you know we're the worst meatball sandwich uh, according to Yelp uh, uh, come and you know he would encourage people to write the the negative uh, reviews and stuff like that. Come and come and try the worst meatball sandwich. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, 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 I actually have two really good like examples that. of that. There but, is a um, a ski uh, resort where somebody left a one star review that said uh, it, it was Snowbird. It says I've heard Snowbird is a tough mountain, but this is ridiculous. It's it's like hell. Uh, you can't. Oh, really, yeah. Nobody can do this. It's too advanced. It's awful. It's awful. Um, they took that one-star review and did a double-spread advert in magazines to say, we're advanced. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's another one, awesome. another one I love, which is for a, a movie called Legend, yeah, which that... came out in the UK, uh, not the old Tom Cruise one. And somebody, 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 yeah, somebody gave it a two-star review in The Guardian. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. And they put the backdrop of all the reviews behind, you know, the five stars, the four stars, and the Guardian review of two stars, they had the two star, the, the two actual celebrities who were in the movie, they had the two stars in between their heads. So it looked like they were covering other stars, but it was actually just the two star review. Oh. And, and the, actually, in, in fact, the, the, the guy who That's wrote funny. the two star review, his tweet That's was, brilliant. this is an incredible way of making my two star review seem like I didn't hate the film. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's it's great. <laughs> Kudos That's to them. Great. So, so that kind of leads me into you know the next uh, part of what what Dave and I were hoping that that we could do with this, Simon, because um, one of the things that we are constantly asked, and I'm sure you are as well, because you know you're all you're all over the conference circuit as well, talking about this kind of stuff. And so, one of the things that that we continue to be asked is, what social media should I be on? Okay, I mean. You know, you you know that uh, this is something that hasn't been new. You know, I think it was seven or eight years ago. I first, mm -hmm. if you guys can believe this, I first created that social meowdy explained by cats, helping people understand. And this was way back in the day when there was only like, you know, seven major ones, and Foursquare was one of them. But basically, you know, t teaching people how to use Twitter or Facebook or the purpose of it. You know, the purpose of LinkedIn versus, um, you know, any of the other ones that are out there. And so. I guess, um, and again, I don't know, Dave. You, you, you. Uh, I think you had a pretty good way of uh, going about this, how you wanted to go about it. But I, I think I just wanted to to jump in and have us tackle the question of, you know, what social network should a business be on, and how do you want to go about that, Dave? Um, since it was my idea, I will I will put you guys on the spot first, and I will say. Um, yeah, the, the goal is, yeah, we're always asked that question and it's, it's just trying to think and have us walk through just a minute or two each of trying to think through what, what would make sense or what wouldn't make sense. So I will give you the first random example. Um, I'm trying to think of something that millennials are destroying. They're destroying everything. Um, <laughs> <No excuse. laughs> um mm -hmm. just something completely, uh, dry cleaner. So a small dry cleaner. What social network should they be on or shouldn't be on? Pick one way or or, or talk through one. Well, I mean, they're obviously going to be on the local stuff. Really quick, they're going to be on things like Yelp. Sense. Simon um, or Matt. Because people, that's, you know, that's where people Post are going to be posting about them. They're going to be talking about them. Um, so they need to make sure they're monitoring those and, you know, any any others that are, um, you know, that, that yeah. pop up. Um, I mean, it's so old now, but Google Alerts, I mean, you can still set those up and they still sometimes work. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean they don't always work, yeah, but you know you, you will at least see some of them come across I to you to let them, you know yeah. where you're being talked about, and if you see people talking about you there, you know that's where you need to be. I mean, it it could be that you could have you know if you're a dry cleaners in a particular community, it could be that there's a community forum that you need to be on, that you need to be monitoring because that's where your customers are, that's where they're talking about you. Um, so that you know that that's the real answer is you know be where people are talking about you. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. I'm glad that you mentioned that because whether, you know, the community forum or even in the form of a, of a Facebook group or whatnot, but 
Um, you know, I think about the um, dry cleaner that I followed uh, forever that was in a in a the, or it was a different one that I had went to uh, when I was in a different area. But the the reason I followed them on Twitter is because every so often they would tweet out a discount code where you know bring in one suit get one suit for free. And so I would always like I would follow them for, for that specific reason. And um, I, again, you know, do I think that's the best channel for them. I think Twitter is more of a customer service channel, but I, I followed them and I used it because that's how they were using it. And so um, I think Simon's or uh, his uh, his advice was spot on, though. Like, figure out. I've got to say that's a really where, great deal. Bring in one suit and we'll give you a free one. People are. And that's great. Use those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, no, cleaning, cleaning. <laughs> Yeah, that that would be great. Yeah. Cleaning, sorry, uh, clarification. They got they got to no, deal with the tailor down the street. Yeah. So, so um, since Dave put us on the spot, I'm going to put him on the spot with a fun one. So th this is one that I got asked all the time. So let's say that I am a divorce attorney. Okay, Dave. Yep. What social media am I going to be on? Feel free to. What social media should you recommend me be on? Feel free to jump in on this one too, Simon. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we've talked about this example before, and Foursquare um, is probably not. Um, you mean you don't want to check into your. Yeah, uh, I don't think people want to be checking or... into where their divorce lawyer is or their psychologist. Um, you know. I mean, how many people do you see every day uh, on Facebook saying, hey, guys, I got my divorce today? Yay! Anyway. Um, very happy people. I, I see but they're still very, not going to be. Know, they're still going to be checking in at the actual yeah. divorce. If they're very happy and it was very bad, they're checking, they're checking, yeah, in, from, they're they're checking in from somewhere. Weatherspoons. Um, <laughs> no, they're not. No, um, they won't want everyone to know. Yeah, they'll, they'll, yeah, they'll be checking <laughs> yeah. in at. Very, very um, yes. Or will they be checking in at Weatherspoons? No, just well, even like. Yeah, that's just going to be a tough one, a divorce lawyer. Like, do you want people – because you, I'm just thinking about even like Yelp or anything like that could be a double-edged sword. It's just going to be the that, other people saying about how you robbed them. Um, well, this but then is, you, this you'd is still that, want to be there and answering questions. Well, this is that, that, good, that, that good point of at least being on there. Not that you have to be active, but for when people are looking for you, like they might find you on Yelp or the, the fact that Yelp is Yelp may rank better for you when people are, are searching for whatever. And so like just the fact that you're on there, I think, you know, yeah, I mean, if, if, you if you're not there, constantly. you're going to be there anyway. You don't necessarily have to be active. You have to have accurate information on your profile or whatnot. I don't know. And yeah, that's very true. Very good point. Take Take a look and, um, it, you know, almost I'm just trying to think through what would make sense, either Yelp, but, you know, do the Q&A on your Google My Business and just answer the questions of, you know, when when should someone talk to a lawyer? When is it too late? Um, what, what questions do I need to be able to answer off the bat? And, you know, take some of those questions or some of those, I don't even know what, how to call it, um, clearly I had to talk to a divorce lawyer. Um, mm -hmm. some of the on, I know it's not the right term, but onboarding or the, the initial questions that you, the lawyer is going to, you know, need to ask, put those on the website, put those, you know, even within the Google Q and A so that someone can quickly find them and, you know, saves you time later, but also yeah, kind of explains. I'm, I'm going to take you back now to, um, to what you. Matt was talking before about the, Glassdoor. You know, the, the, I don't know if you remember the is. precursor to Glassdoor. Simon. Simon. It was a site called no, it was a site called eftcompany.com. Only not eft. Um, and and uh, pay scale thing or well, I mean, I, I don't know that there's any relationship between the two, but oh, when yeah. they oh, when, when um, they died off, then that space was there. Them, I didn't know that uh, was and and yeah, eftcompany.com was actually a place for people to go and write about their company oh, I see and talk about watching. all the effed up things that happened in their workspace, and there was no opportunity, I don't believe, for any kind of recourse. Um, with Glassdoor, I mean, you can at least, you know, write some responses in there. Uh, and people do look at Glassdoor. They, I mean, Glassdoor is not just people complaining about the place. Uh, you do get people saying nice things about it. And you also get people talking about salary information and the types of roles that are there. So, I mean, Glassdoor is a little bit more than that. 
Um, but then that gets into the whole other thing oh, of, yeah. um, you know, yep. if you are on uh, one of these sites, whether it's Glassdoor, whether it's Yelp, whatever it is, don't get your employees or yourself to start writing reviews about yourself because that's a really bad thing because you will get found out. Um, you know, Yelp, Yelp does review that. Yelp does look at that. And also, you know, conversely, no, don't, don't do have that. them do the, the negative reviews about your competitors. Because we, we see that happening. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nope, not at all. From, from your office. <laughs> so the IP address is the same. <laughs> yes, that's one. that won't show up. That's funny. Same, the same person that just wrote four different reviews from four different names saying this company is awesome also just wrote eight reviews saying these two companies are bad. Wow. All from the same IP address on the same day. It's like they were. And I was going to say, even that, like even taking it further beyond and, and people that create web pages or people that create fake accounts. Like one of the things that I've learned after all the years of, I know you all know Alan Blyweiss. One of the years, over the years I've learned is through however he does it with his forensic uh, SEO magic and audits, like he always finds Yeah, one, one of my I mean, favorite ones, been a um, case there was a, um, to, like, an Xbox or a PS3 so game that came know, out like, and it got a really bad game, review uh, in Engadget. So what the CEO did was he sent out a letter to his team which said, you know, this guy likes to review things. Um, he wrote a oh, book geez. three years ago. Here's a link to it on Amazon. Anybody who feels like they want to should go ahead and review his book. Suddenly his book got a ton of reviews, all negative. And this is a book that had been out for three years and hadn't had a review for two and a half years. So it was really obvious what had happened there. Oh, geez. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, um, I mean, do, do right, you want well, to throw Dave, a few more directors out? Do you want to do round two of this? Or Simon, you, you want to throw one to us? <laughs> <laughs> that's more that's crematoriums. Um, yeah. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. People are dying to get in. Oh, wait, that was bad. <laughs> Not Who do you want to give a tip I mean, about how to uh, how some people, whatever your right, industry so, is, to think about? Um, what What do you want? Yeah, I like that better. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's not on the spot then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Uh, uh, Sure. Yeah. At the time, what's your one tip? I mean, you know, we talked we talked about different industries and about how to be there. What's your one tip about how to I mean, approach? Again, you know, the the main um, thing is um, make sure you have some form of presence on. everywhere. It Especially if have, you have you know, even if you just reserve the names, but that's, just in general, just hold that. You, you know, um, go. But the ones where your customers are, the ones where they are actually active, where they're engaged, make sure you're there. Um, make sure you have some form of presence, uh, even if it's not. Even if it's somebody like an advocate that you have out there, you know, make sure that you have somebody that's looking out for your company, looking out for your brand, looking out for your business. Um, someone who can answer questions when a question pops up. Um, if you have the resource to be able to do that in-house, then great. Uh, but still, make sure you're there. Make sure you're answering everything, positively, negatively, neutrally. Um, and, you know, keep looking for how things evolve. Keep looking for how things change. Obviously, you know, if you had a good MySpace strategy in 2007, I ain't going to play today. You know, if, if, if you're still looking at your Plurk strategy, yeah, no. Um, and, you know, if, if you're looking at your Telegraph strategy today, you know, that one's changing today um, with what's happening over in Russia and Iran. With That's a huge social network out there. Um, so, you know, keep an eye out for what changes. Keep an eye out for where people are. Um, don't always jump on the next big thing. Um, you know, wait to see if it does actually start to move. Yeah. You know, I mean, Google Plus, for all its issues, um, for a while, it actually did drive some good traffic for uh, different verticals. It had some really good, strong um, support. Uh, whereas I don't believe that LO did anything for anybody. 
No. 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 No, that's, I mean, you, you bring up some great uh, final points there, Simon, because, you know, it makes me think of there's this uh, Waffle Crush truck that I followed forever on um, Facebook, and that's where they used to do, like, a, I mean, they're on both places still, but they used to be predominantly heavy on Facebook, and then they realized that all their following and every, their most engagement and everything was from Instagram. And so you could see, like, I watched, I don't know how subtle it was to other people, but maybe just because I'm in the industry, but I saw how they slowly kind of transition from Facebook being their main thing to Instagram is now the main yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, we, we know that's where any aspect are, of that's online marketing it, that's why they made evolves. It so, and it evolves fairly quickly. You're spot on by so saying, you've got to keep you know, go where the customers are and, and pay attention to that. So, um, oh, yeah, it does. All right. Well, uh, any final thoughts, Dave? Yeah, I was just going to say we kind of talked about it in another episode. But even if even if your customers aren't, you know, even if you're that divorce lawyer and you, your customers aren't looking for you on Twitter, if you have a number of people that work for you or have worked for you, you know, Glassdoor, Twitter, Facebook, you know, incoming new hires, look at those social networks and see what people are saying about you. If mm-hmm. nothing else, just monitor your own employees and anyone mentioning. No, I mean, that, that, that's pretty much brand. it. I mean, monitor, keep figuring uh, out what's going else, on, where things are moving, what people are talking about. And kind of listen. Um, and, and that's a great one from Dave as well, is to monitor right. uh, any final um, thoughts for your competitors Simon? as well as monitor tertiary terms uh, or monitor, um, you know, things about your product or your competitor's product. Just see what's going on within the industry, what what the prevailing discussions are. And if you see that, you know, everybody hates your industry uh, because, let's say, you're, you know, installing cable and nobody shows up within that eight-hour period and everyone hates you, but they hate all your competitors too, well, you know, that's the industry. If you're the only one in an industry that people hate, then you got a problem. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're lucky. No? <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. This has been a great discussion. Uh, hopefully for everybody that's been listening, you kind of get some, you know, ho- hopefully it gives you an idea. I guess uh, the main takeaways would be, you know, even if you're in an industry that you may not be, you know, people may not be checking in or that you may not be tweeting from every single day at least have that presence there and monitor and know what people are saying about you because it could be employees that are saying stuff. It could be uh, people that are looking for information. It could be, you know, uh, an array of, of, of thank you. And thank you for not mispronouncing my name at the end for you. So pay attention (laughs) to that kind of stuff, go where the customers are. And uh, again, I really appreciate Simon joining us uh, for uh, this episode. Thank you, Simon. And uh, (laughs) I'm just going to stick with Simon, you know. (laughs) All right. Well, for Simon and Dave, I'm Matt Siltola, and we will uh, see you guys on another episode of the Business of Digital Podcast. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Bye.